Hey kids, this is Ivan. How you doing? Well, got a question for you. I watched a video, I think it was yesterday, it was called Kitty Box. It was by Ron Edwards, and he was talking about sandbox games. And I thought for sure I was not going to agree with him about sandbox games or about sandbox play or whatever. But I was pleasantly surprised because he gave some criteria which would define what sandbox play might be like. And that, you know, even pointed out, when I, and I agree these days, kind of a, a loose term, it's really vague, it, it doesn't really fit role-playing games that well, but we all kind of sort of know what we're talking about. You know, when we're talking about sandbox as opposed to some kind of linear, you must go do this, you're constrained in some sort of way. And he, he gave uh, three really good criteria for, you know, what makes a sandbox a sandbox. And then he talked a little bit about, you know, certain games which purport to, like, give you a sandbox experience, but maybe they're missing one of these. And it made a lot of sense to me. I mean, uh, this video isn't about my preferences, but I definitely prefer that sort of, like, uh, open world uh, where you act as kind of free agents within it and you're not driven to go do this or driven to go do that. I like to see kind of what happens. We play to find out. Um, but here's the, here's the uh, criteria he gave, and then I want to actually ask the real question. Um, Criteria for a sandbox was first the, the passage and the constraints of time, like stuff is really going on in the world. Uh, it's not just, you know, it, in other words, the examples he gave was it's not just that there are these, these um, um, frozen rooms in the dungeon or in the scenario where there's, there's a, a box text or whatever, and there's monsters, there's people, there's some kind of scenario that's just kind of frozen in time until the characters get there. And then when the characters get there, then these people animate and come to life. There's actually a real dynamic living world going on. And if you are in Australia just hunting crocodiles and Hitler invades Poland because you weren't paying attention to what happens in Germany, well, eventually that's going to have an effect on you. You know, the, the Second World War starts in Europe regardless of whether or not you happen to be there. That sort of thing. The second one he gave was a mobility and options for destinations. In other words, you are free to go wherever you want to go in the world, you know, within certain constraints. Like, you know, the world is, the plant's only so big. You get that basic idea. But you're not constrained in terms of where you must go, where you have to go. Like, you, you, you know, can I go over here? Yes, you can. You know, can I go, can I go to Australia? Yes, you can. That sort of thing. If that makes, you know, if you're understanding where that's coming from, if that makes any sense. Um, and the last one was events and decisions with consequences. There's no canned or planned outcomes or situations, you know, which is something very near and dear to my heart, something I, I particularly like. Those three criteria together, you know, he said was, was probably a good uh, set of criteria for a sandbox. I, I don't think I can think of any others. That really kind of, you know, sums it all up. And I'm not going to go into all the uh, examples he gave. I mean, go watch his video if you want to about, like, you know, what... You know, it says it's a sandbox, but it's not a sandbox. I'll give you a real good example, though, of a game that can be taken either way. Let's, uh, because I'm going to be running this, like, tomorrow. Hollow Earth Expedition. Great game. Now, you read this book, it's 1936. It gives you a whole bunch of locations, ideas, stuff that's going on in the world. Um, and some of the other books, some of the, the uh, supplemental books, like uh, right here, we've got Secrets of the Surface World, which I'm going to take some information out of as well. Gives you some more information here. It's it, you, This book, or these books, if I can talk, give you this kind of sandbox. It's this open world. You know, there's, there's time, there's things that are going on. You kind of fill in some of those details. But more importantly, you can go anywhere in there. And there's no... Um, there's no pre-planned story or plot or arc that the characters must do. Now, there are modules. There are adventures written for Hollow Earth Expedition. This one right here has, I think, like four or five of them or whatever. These are different. These actually have a planned outcome or situation. There's plots. They're linear. Um, it, it pretty much says, well, the characters go here, and then this chase is going to happen, etc. And maybe it gives a few different outcomes, but it's much more... It's, it's not a sandbox. So you can play Hollow Earth Expedition... Let's just go. You can go wherever you want to, and we fill in the details, and, and time's actually moving, or you can play it in less of a sandbox uh, fashion. And here's my questions, you know, getting back to <laughs> getting back to what I really want to talk about. It's funny, because I haven't had the opportunity to play in what I would consider a real sandbox, where things really um, fit all these criteria in terms of time and space and decisions having consequences and freedom of action in quite some time. Probably the closest one I've had to that would be uh, the Lamentations in Prussia game I was running. Um, you know, an all-for-one regime Diablo comes close, but with a multiple GMs it can be a little bit difficult to have that, you know, be a complete sandbox. But here's my two questions, two. Um, is it, in fact, really a sandbox if you start to make up details about an area 
only when the players go there. In other words, I, I think I have a video I made years ago. Don't go back and watch it because it's probably terrible. But I talked about the idea of starting a, a world where the epicenter, wherever the characters happen to be right now, I know a lot of details. I know the NPCs. I know the locations. I know lots of little things that are going on over there. I know what's going on in the big world outside of them, but the farther away you get from the epicenter, farther away you get from the characters, the, the blurrier it is. The, the, I'm not as sharp focus, you know. Maybe they're in Australia. I know what's going on in Germany and Poland, but I don't have the NPCs all named. But if the characters go that way, then I start to make up all the details. I, I've done that in the Lamentations in Prussia game. When the characters went to a certain location, I made up some more details. Is that really a sandbox? Now, clearly, we all know. You can't make up every single detail, every single NPC and whatnot. But is, does that really fit those criteria at that particular point? Second um, question I have is if... As a game master, you start to introduce elements based upon what the characters find interesting. Is that still a sandbox? And I'm not saying you make up things that are going to be this now uh, linear plot, like an all-for-one regime diabolique. You know, we become interested in the Martell family, and you know, what are they up to? And and we we and the Bouvet werewolf and the Bouvet family. So we've made up some more details about that, but we haven't come up with these plots where this you know this new guy is going to take over the. the uh, the uh, family in Paris, and at some point the Musketeers will meet him in this battle over here, you know, two scenes down the road. No, it's not, not it. But we are adding more details as the, uh, the characters show that they're interested in it. In Lamentations in Prussia, I added more details and had some things go, you know, past uh, the, the, the characters because they became interested in those sorts of things. I didn't violate what was going on in the world in terms of the spirit of what was happening in the campaign, but I, I sent some more things their way because I knew that was floating their boat. Is that now not a sandbox? So, what do you think about all that? I'd like to hear it.